Hey guys, in this video, let's discuss private endpoint for Redis cache. So guys, first we will understand what is private endpoint and then we will also understand why we should use it. And then we will see a practical demo. So basically we have a web API project which is running in our local laptop in Visual Studio and that project connects with Redis cache. That is we can access this Redis cache from public network. And now we will enable private endpoint for this Redis cache. That means we cannot access this Redis cache from our local laptop that is from public network. And then finally we will host this same web API project in Azure VM. And then we will connect to this Redis cache from this VM using private endpoint. Now let's first discuss the scenario when we don't have private endpoint that is we have enabled the public network access. So that means now guys, let's say this is our Azure cache for Redis and you can see it has this public IP and as of now we can connect to this Azure cache for Redis from public internet and obviously we can connect it over this public IP. But now is, as you can guess, this has security issues. Whenever any resource, if it is open or public IP, that means if it is accessible from public internet, then chances of that resource getting hacked are very high. And ultimately it gives an opportunity to the hacker to enter our virtual network. And obviously we should avoid that. And now let's discuss what is this private endpoint. So basically in simple words consider that when we have private endpoint that means we are connecting to this resource that is to this Azure cache for Redis over private IP. So let's say this is the private IP. So, so basically what happens is let's say we create a private endpoint within this VNet. Okay. So. So from this VNet using this private endpoint, we simply connect to this resource over this private IP. In fact, what actually happens is this resource again, this resource means Azure cache for Redis. It actually gets extended within this VNet. That means you can consider now this resource again, this Azure cache for Redis. Now it is a part of this VNet only. So you can see it is now extended within this VNet and now resources from this VNet they can access this Redis cache over this private IP. So again you can see this is private IP. And when we have created private endpoint the second step we do is we simply disable the access from this public internet. So such access it is disabled. Now the only way to connect to such resource is from within this VNet using private endpoint. And now guys let's see the practical demo. So first let's say access from public internet for this Redis cache is enabled. Okay. So that means I can connect to this Redis cache from my local laptop again from public internet. Okay. And then we will create private endpoint and then we will observe that now we cannot connect from our local laptop and now let's see it in action. So guys, this is simple ASP.NET Core web API project. And if you see, I have created one API and the, and the API is admin slash get app admin list. So basically this API it returns the list of application administrators in our application. And let's quickly discuss the code written in this API. So basically here what we are doing is we are checking if that list of admins if it's present in the cache. If it's not present that means we are fetching this list for the first time. So obviously we, so obviously for the first time we will fetch it from SQL database but at the same time we will add it in Redis cache. And then for subsequent calls, instead of fetching it from the database, we will simply fetch it from our Redis cache. 
so it's simple and straightforward code and now let's run this project and you can see guys i have added a debugger over here let's run it and guys you can see our project is running and the debugger has been hit here now i will say go next so we are in this else block that means this record that is list of admins it is present in that cache so we'll say next and here let's retrieve the list from cache next and here let's simply return that list so i'll say continue yes our api is working but most important it means we are able to connect to this azure redis cache right and now let's disable the public access and let's create private endpoint and so let's go to the azure portal so guys we are in azure and this is our azure cache for redis now on the left hand side let's go down and guys can you see this private endpoint let's click on it now guys first important thing now guys first the important thing if we have disabled the access from public network in that case we will have an option over here that is enable public network access but as we cannot see that option that means we have enabled the access from public internet right and now let's create this private endpoint so let's click on this let's give name to this private endpoint so i will say redis cache private endpoint i will say next and here we have to select a resource that means basically we have to select the resource for which we are creating this private endpoint so here from resource type let's select redis and from this resource drop down let's select our azure cache for redis and now let's say next and now as you can guess we have to select the virtual network over here as well see guys again if you can see this screen we are allowing access to this resource again with private endpoint this resource it gets extended within this vnet right so we are allowing an access to this resource from within this vnet right and here within this vnet only we are creating this private endpoint so so here let's select the virtual network and then let's select the subnet so i will select subnet as default let's say next 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 and here let's say create So guys our private endpoint has been created and let's say go to resource and guys can you see this private link resource so that means this private endpoint has been created for this resource so let's actually click on this and again we are back in our redis cache now on the left hand side let's go down again let's click on this private endpoint and guys observe this now here we can see the private endpoint which we just created but in addition can you see this option that is enable public network access so that means the access from public network it is blocked and now let's actually try that so guys we are back in visual studio and let's run our project again that is let's call this api again i will say enter yes the debugger has been hit but now let's say go next and you see it's already taking some time let's wait and can you see this exception has occurred and what it says is timed out and there was no connection available so basically from public internet we are not able to connect to this redis cache and now let's see if we can connect to this redis cache from vm that is from the that is from this web api project which is hosted in this vm and again guys this vm it is present in the same virtual network 
for which we created the private endpoint. So guys, basically when you want to host a web API project in VM, so obviously first we will create VM, then we have to configure IIS in that VM and then we have to host this ASP.NET Core web API project in VM. So I am not going to repeat these steps over here, but I have created a separate video for this and I will share the link of that video in the description of this video. Right. So now let's assume we have created VM, we have configured IIS on that VM and we have hosted the same ASP.NET Core web API project in that VM. And again, this web API project, it connects to that Redis cache. So we are in Azure and this is the VM which we created and guys observe this. We are under overview and the and this VM it is present in this virtual network subnet that is my VNet and we have created private endpoint exactly for this virtual network that is my VNet only okay and now let's actually RDP to this VM so guys we are in this VM and we have configured IIS and then we have hosted this same web API project in this IIS and now Let's actually run this project. And you can see our web API project is running successfully and we can see the output as well. So that means we are able to connect to this Redis cache from this web API project hosted in this VM. And why we are able to connect again this VM it is hosted in the same virtual network for which we have created private endpoint.